Hey everybody, happy holidays to you. It is time for my 2016 Big 12 Bowl Preview Show. I do this virtually every year, but I have football blocks. And why change tradition, okay? Now, the only exception is that I will not have a bowl preview of Oklahoma. Even though I know the Sooners are in the Big 12, I give the Sooners their own separate bowl preview show, which will occur on a future show coming pretty soon. So make sure to check that out. Of course, we know that the Sooners will play Auburn in the Sugar Bowl coming up on Monday, January the 2nd. Sooners are favored, but of course, we know that the Sooners are making a lot of news off the field, which hasn't been good, of course, with uh, Joe Mixon in particular. But we'll break down Oklahoma-Auburn coming up in a few days, so make sure to check that out. There are five other Big 12 schools that did qualify for uh, bowl games. Those that didn't were Texas Tech, Texas, Iowa State, and Kansas. However... We're going to preview the other five Big 12 schools who did, beginning with the Baylor Bears, who will play uh, coming up uh, Tuesday night. Very late Tuesday, by the way. They won't even kick off until around 9.15 uh, for the Cactus Bowl. In Phoenix, where the Arizona Diamondbacks play. They're going to convert that into a football field. So it will be Baylor who won their first six but lost their last six under interim head coach Jim Grobe. Well, guess what? Um, they get the Boise State Broncos, who know a thing or two about winning bowl games in the state of Arizona. All you have to do is ask Oklahoma and TCU that. They'll tell you. It's not a major bowl, but it will be played in Phoenix, the Cactus Bowl. And which Baylor team are we going to get? Um, you know, beginning of the year, things were looking just fine, and then – uh, they not only had to deal with struggles defensively, but also injury bug. You know, uh, Seth Russell, second straight year that he didn't get to finish the season because of injury, and that allowed um, a guy by the name of Zach Smith to take over at quarterback. Did decent. Got remember a freshman. You know, ten touchdowns, six interceptions. Um, and of course, one guy that did have one heck of a year was uh, Katie Cannon, the Baylor wide receiver. So you got that going for you if you're a Bears fan. But unfortunately, one of the most productive backs in the history of that school. In fact, the most productive as far as career rushing yardage as well as rushing touchdowns, Shock Limwood, will not play in this game because he says he wants to focus on the National Football League. So he's skipping the bowl game, just like Leonard Fournette of LSU, as well as Christian McCaffrey are doing as well. And by the way, no coincidence, or maybe a coincidence, that all three, leaving for the NFL, play the running back position. So, again, what will you get with Baylor? I think Baylor's offense will be okay in this game, but I'm picking Boise State. Boise State, by the way, went 10 and 2 this past season. And remember, Baylor, one of their biggest Achilles heels all season long, has been stopping the run. They have stunk in this department big time. I think they're not even in the top 95 in the country in brush defense. In the meantime, you got Boise State running back by the name of Jeremy McNichols, over 1,600 yards on the ground this season. Fifth best amongst all FBS running backs. And, of course, we know that Baylor off the field. You think OU's having some issues right now making news off the field? Well, Baylor's been making news off the field for a lot longer. And you might remember that uh, the sexual um, assault allegations that was not monitored, patrolled properly by head coach R. Bryles. Well, of course, that costed him his job. Of course, we know that Baylor... Next year, um, the Temple head coach is going to take over the Bear squad. So maybe some stability for that program. But in my opinion, that doesn't start until next year. I think Baylor's season will end with their seventh straight loss. Now, the next three matchups we're going to talk on my Big 12 Bowl preview show will be former conference rivals. Okay, let's begin with West Virginia. West Virginia taking on Miami in the Russell Athletic Bowl in Orlando. These two teams used to play each other all the time when they were in the Big East Conference in the 90s and, of course, in the 2000s. Miami owns this series, winning virtually every matchup. we got to remember that was back during the day when Miami was one of the dominating teams in college football. Not so much now. Uh, Miami 8-4 and four this season. Not bad by Mark Ricks. But remember, Miami was undefeated entering uh, the early part of October, and then offensively got exposed big time. What do I mean? Well, Miami, um, in their eight wins this year, they averaged over 200 yards on the ground per game. And in their four losses, they averaged, well, how about this? They only averaged 65 yards per game on the ground in their four losses. 
That is a big, big, big discrepancy of about 135 yards rushing per game, difference between winning and losing. It can't all be Brad Kaya, their, their quarterback, who I do think will be a high NFL draft pick. But it has to come from the running department, and I think West Virginia um, will be up to the test. I think the Mountaineers, a, a season in which they went 10-0, against everybody this year who was not named Oklahoma. Remember the two losses came against Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Right now, the Mountaineer program has to be feeling pretty good. They're going to be a force next year as well. Remember, they finished third this year in Big 12 play, and Dana Holgerson just got a contract extension paying him just over $18 million over the next five years. So he's going to be around in Morgantown for quite a while. I look for Skylar Howard uh, to end on a high note. Remember Howard this year, 26 touchdown passes and 14 yards per um, per catch or per throw, per completion, I should say, uh, over 14 yards per completion. Four receivers who've caught at least 32 passes, so you know there's going to be balance on that West Virginia passing attack. Good running game as well. I look for West Virginia, even though Miami's going to have the fan advantage because it's in Orlando, not far from Miami. I look for West Virginia with their offense to be just too much for their Hurricanes to handle. Miami's got a good rushing defense, but not so much as far as pass D goes. I look for West Virginia to exploit it at the Russell Athletic Bowl. And yes, another game involving former conference rivals. These two used to play in the Big 12, Kansas State and Texas A&M. Probably two of their most famous matchups was 1998 when K-State was one game away from getting to the national championship game. But in the Big 12 title game, it was A&M with Sir Parker scoring the game-winning touchdown in overtime and A&M winning their only Big 12 title, thus spoiling Kansas State's shot at playing Tennessee that year for the national title. 2011 was the last time these two teams faced each other. The game went four overtimes, and Kansas State won the game. Something about overtime and the Wildcats and the Aggies. I don't know. Could it happen again? Well, don't be surprised because these teams, record-wise, are even. Both at 8-4. and A&M, probably, when you look at them in the beginning of the year, if somebody told you they were going to go 8-4, and four, you'd probably say, yeah, that's, that's probably about right. With K-State, you'd probably think an 8-4 and four record would be overachieving. You know, let's, let's face it, their offense, you know, had, had struggled recently. But but this year, even though they don't throw the ball very much, it's a ground control effort from the running backs all the way to their quarterback in Jesse Ertz. You know, their winning rusher. And K-State this year not only went 8-4 and four overall, but they went 6-3 and three in the Big 12. Only losses coming to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. In the Oklahoma State game, they very well could have won. And the West Virginia game, they only lost on the road by one point. So K-State could have had a nine, maybe a ten-win season. The Bill Snyder, you know, knows how to coach football. He's proven that over the decades. And I think he'll have his team ready for this matchup. Now, a and we know that they've got the athletes. And looks like they'll have Trevor Knight, you know, who came back to play after missing a couple of games because of injury, came back to play against LSU. Um, and it looks like he'll be ready to go for this one. Good news and bad news for AM. Good news is that they've got receivers. You know, we know that with Josh Reynolds. We know that with Christian Kirk. Bad news, no speedy noil, though, for the Aggies. Um, suspended because of a misdemeanor drug charge. Um, so, obviously, that didn't help matters much at all. And we know that, um, that the Aggies are going to have um, maybe the number one overall pick in next year's NFL draft in Miles Garrett. So, obviously, AM fans enjoy uh, Garrett one final time. Now, if I were just going off talent, I'd say A&M with Kevin Simmons' team wins this game in the Texas Bowl. But I'm going to say Kansas State because I'm going with a team that not only, you know, has big-time coaching experience with Bill Snyder and also a team, too, that runs the ball very efficiently and can control the clock. But Kansas State, to me, when I look at these two teams, they're the most likely team of the two to make the least amount of mistakes. I'm going to take Kansas State to win this one in Houston. That's the Texas Bowl. And another matchup involving two teams that used to play each other as conference rivals. Talking about Oklahoma State and Colorado and their rivalry. It goes all the way back to the Big 8 conference days and, of course, into the Big 12. Um, you have to say right now, who would be the National Coach of the Year? Probably going to be Mike McIntyre, the Colorado uh, head guy. You know, remember, you know, Colorado, I know they haven't been the big in the uh, Pac-12 very long, 
but in their uh, tenure so far, it hasn't gone very well. I mean, they, they've stuck. They've been, as a matter of fact, the bottom feeders of the uh, Pac-12, but not this year, as a matter of fact. Um, Colorado, 10-3, and winning the Pac-12 South, and for one half, hanging tough with Washington, who, of course, went on to win the game and go on to the college football playoff to play Alabama uh, this upcoming weekend. But, again, you know, Colorado hung tough one half in the Pac-12 championship game. Um, Colorado fans might be wondering, you know, what might have been if uh, Sifo uh, Limfow had been able to stay healthy. Now, Limfow had um, a ankle injury and was able to only play a limited amount of time. As a matter of fact, you didn't even see him, I don't think, most of the second half in that Pac-12 championship game. It made a big, big difference. Nice arm, but he's very athletic, and he gives Colorado a chance in this game. But in the Alamo Bowl, I'm going to take Oklahoma State because I think Mike Gundy wants to show a lot of people that, hey, he's a more aggressive coach than what you saw in Bedlam against Oklahoma just a few weeks ago. You might remember that conservative play calling, which they could have gone for it, which they could have been, you know, a little bit more risk-taking and instead was too conservative, falling right into Oklahoma's hands in that department. I don't think you're going to see Coach Gundy uh, do that again, especially in this upcoming game. Remember San Antonio, the central southern part of Texas is a hot recruiting bed for Oklahoma State. It has been. So, hey, why not show the country, why not show Texas what you're made of and trying to add more recruits to that class? And I look for Oklahoma State to win the game. I think they will uh, show a little bit more diversity with the ground attack with Justice Hill and with the combination of Rudolph and Washington. Be curious to see if those guys come back next year. And if they do, Oklahoma State's going to be one of the top teams around, and they will give Oklahoma all they want next year in Big 12 play if both those guys return. Because Oklahoma State has a ton of guys coming back. I look for the Cowboys in a high-scoring game to outlast the Buffaloes. It is the Liberty Bowl, TCU against Georgia. Well, a couple of guys that, you know, have known defense in the past. Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator at Bama in his first year at Georgia. And they've had some up and downs this season. I mean, you don't know what team you're going to get. The one that was able to shut down Auburn late in the year or the one that uh, lost at Vanderbilt. Certainly, you know, didn't see that coming. I know Vanderbilt's improved, but come on. It's Georgia. It's one of the top jobs in the country. And I know the Bulldogs expect more uh, than what they got this year going just 7-5. and five. They played a little bit better in November, but then they closed the season out with a loss at Georgia Tech. TCU, in the meantime, though, they truly have been up and down. You really don't know what you're going to get from those guys. You know, the team that almost came from behind to beat Oklahoma and the one that whacked Texas, or will it be the one uh, that we saw just absolutely – um, get throttled by Oklahoma State, the one that lost to Texas Tech. I mean, Texas Tech didn't even go to a bowl game, and TCU couldn't handle them at home. Kenny Hill got hurt against Kansas State in the regular season finale, but does look like uh, does look like the foot will be ready to go in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis against the Bulldogs. Who do I like in this game? I tell you, I tell you both teams um, have not been impressive, and they, they, might, they might as well call this the disappointment bowl between the Horn Frogs and the Bulldogs. I'm going to say Georgia just because I don't trust TCU's defense. At least Georgia's defense at times has shown signs of life. TCU's defense, uh-uh. And Kenny Hill, sometimes he could be a thrill, and sometimes he can make you reach for the headache medicine and make your stomach turn. Okay, he's that type of a quarterback. So it really comes down to a game like that of who do you trust. And in this case, I don't trust either team, but I trust TCU a lot less than I do Georgia. So... Give me the Bulldogs, it'll be a close game, but I think Georgia um, ends TCU's year on a down note. So that's my look at Big 12 Bowl games for the 2016 season. Of course, don't forget my preview of Oklahoma and Auburn will be coming up soon on this very channel, so check it out. It'll be my Sugar Bowl preview of the Sooners as well as the Tigers, meaning just for the second time in college football. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.